Hello, BCPS students. This is Grade 5 Bridges, Week 12, June 1st through June 5th. We're going to be classifying quadrilaterals today. Students will understand the characteristics of quadrilaterals to understand the hierarchy of quadrilateral classification. Hmm, let's look at these quadrilaterals. Which one doesn't belong? Why do you think it doesn't belong? Find somebody at your house and you can explain to them why you think one of these quadrilaterals doesn't belong. Okay, today we're going to use a hierarchy to classify quadrilaterals. Remember, a quadrilateral is any polygon with four sides. And a hierarchy is a way of classifying objects. In this case, we're going to do it with quadrilaterals. That starts with the most general term for an entire set and works from there toward more specific types of objects in the set. We're going to look at three different types of quadrilaterals here. We have a trapezoid, which is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. A parallelogram, which is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides opposite each other. And a kite, a quadrilateral with two pairs of adjacent sides that are congruent. Remember, congruent means the same length or equal length. So then from there, we can classify even further. We have a rectangle, which is a type of parallelogram. It is a parallelogram with four right angles. And we can even go further which, with a rhombus. A rhombus is a parallelogram or a kite with four congruent sides. So it could be either. So specifically, a rhombus can be a special parallelogram or a special kite. And then finally, we have the square. A square is a parallelogram or kite with four right angles and four congruent sides. It's like a special rectangle or a special rhombus. When examining the hierarchy, we can move from the bottom of the hierarchy up to name special quadrilaterals. So if we start at the bottom, we have the square, which is a rectangle, and a rectangle is a parallelogram, and a parallelogram is a type of quadrilateral. This works. All squares are rectangles, all rectangles are parallelograms, and all parallelograms are quadrilaterals. Let's look at this a different way. Remember that in a hierarchy, there are categories and subcategories. A subcategory is defined as a subset of the category or subcategories above it. So let's look at it the opposite way. Qua starting with a quadrilateral, then going to a parallelogram, and then to a rectangle, to square, then to a square. Does this work? This does not work. All quadrilaterals are not parallelograms. Some are trapezoids or kites. All par parallelograms are not rectangles. Some are rhombuses. All rectangles are not squares. Some don't have four congruent sides. I want you to look at the diagram. We're going to label all the quadrilaterals, starting with the one on the outside. We know it's a quadrilateral because it has four sides. Let's get a little more specific at this one down here at the bottom. Here we have a trapezoid. Remember, a trapezoid only has one set of parallel sides. And then we have a parallelogram. All these shapes are actually parallelograms, starting with the outside and everything inside. We have a rectangle because it has four right angles. And then we have a rhombus. It has four congruent sides. Inside both of those, we have squares. Remember, a square can be a special rhombus or a special rectangle, and it is a parallelogram as well. Now let's look at this diagram and answer some questions. Why is the trapezoid inside the quadrilateral but outside the parallelogram? Because a trapezoid is a quadrilateral, but it is not a parallelogram. Let's answer another question together. Why are there a rhombus and a rectangle inside the parallelogram? 
because both rhombuses and rectangles are types of parallelograms. Why are there two squares, one inside the rhombus and one inside the rectangle? Because a square is a rhombus with four right angles, and it is also a rectangle with four congruent sides. Now on your own, you can use a piece of scrap paper, identify at least two other observations to explain why the shapes in this diagram have been placed where they are in relation to in relationship to each other. Now it's time to try it. You're gonna use the knowledge that you've learned in this lesson to try many examples. Remember, all these papers are located in your Schoology course. You can do them on graph paper, scrap paper, or you can print them out, or you can do them in your Schoology course. Here's another paper for practice looking at the parallelograms and the shapes that aren't parallelograms, you want to answer the five questions on the right side. It's time to show us what you know. Remember, talk to your teacher how they want you to submit your work. All these problems are located in your Schoology course. There are six figures. We want you to identify how many right angles are in each figure, how many pairs of congruent sides there are in each figure, how many pairs of parallel sides, and circle the word or words that describe the figures. Remember that hierarchy of the quadrilaterals. Here are the last three figures to complete the table. And then you're done for the week. I look forward to spending time with you next week when we do week 13 of Grade 5 Bridges.